Leo Shin is the host of the news and opinion program, The Point, on news channel CGTN or China Global Television. She joins me now from Beijing. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you for the invitation again. You've described Nancy Pelosi on your program as being vain and opportunistic. Why use that language? Well, I think that's exactly who she is and uh, what she has shown to the world, especially to the Chinese people. She is out there for show. She's very theatrical. She does it for herself. She did the whole thing for her, her own legacy, however she defines it. She wants to look tough. She wants to go away as being the top ranking US politician to ever visit the island, female politician. And, uh, you know, she does that without consideration for any possible consequences for the people of Taiwan, for US-China relations. You said she was sneaking into Taiwan. I just want to look at that language. Um, it was hardly sneaking, was it, Liu Xin? This was announced for months. She flew in. Um, there was no hiding away. There was no hiding of her intention. This was not someone sneaking into Taiwan. Well, definitely, she was uh, keeping it quite secretive before the last moment. I mean, nobody knew exactly, well, at least in public, she never confirmed this trip. Nobody ever knew for, for the record whether she was going there. It was until uh, her plane started to turn north after turning east from, uh, from her previous destination that we know for sure that she was going to land in Taiwan. Why? I think the reason is very clear. She knew She's doing something that is uh, very fishy, well, that is very bad. Well, yeah, she, that's she, why she, she doesn't was, want to make was, it public. She was intending to go in April. It was pushed back. There was a lot of discussion within the United States about the whys and wherefores of her visit, whether she should in fact go. But doesn't she have the right to go? Taiwan elects its own government. There are relationships, not formally diplomatic, but there are relationships between between the United States and Taiwan. Um, didn't she have the right to visit Taiwan? Of course not. She's the number three politician in the US government. And the United States made the pledge uh, as early as in the 1970s not to recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state, that Taiwan is part of China, that the, the government in the People's Republic of China is the sole legal government of China. Well, there is China, ambiguity so about that. Yeah, as, as, as there's you know, no there is a, there is there no, is a one China I'm sorry, policy. No, there is a one China no policy ambiguity. and strategic ambiguity around that. Ask 181 countries in the world. Ask 181 countries in the world. By the way, that's the absolute majority of members of the international community, whether there are two Chinas, whether there's, there's one China, one Taiwan, or whether there is one China, they all will tell you there is only one China. There is absolutely, and you including know, Australia, and you, there is and, and absolutely you know. no ambiguity. Well, we know there is ambiguity around how that relationship is played out, the relationship between Australia, the United States, Taiwan. We know that there is a recognition of that autonomy, even if there is not a recognition of a separate status. But I, I, I want to ask you this, Liu Xin. Why does it, to explain to our audience, why does it matter to China so much? Would it have been possible for China to ignore this visit? Okay. If indeed, as you say, there is a yeah, one China policy and Taiwan in the eyes of Beijing belongs to Beijing. Why, why does it matter? Let me help you understand if you don't by now. I see the whole matter as a person with an open wound near the heart. Okay, and that open wound, this person is China, of course, that open wound has been the issue of separation, of, of an issue of secessionist or, or Taiwan independence. And this is an open wound that has been there since 73 years and it's been bleeding all the time. It hurts because that's the most tender part of the Chinese uh, emotions, identity. People across the straits, they came from the same family, they share the same culture, the same language, the same way of life, the same heritage, you name it. But uh, for 73 years, they've been separated. And then here comes this lady saying, oh, what is a big deal? It is my right to put some salt, some extra salt on it so that, you know, I can go away looking at, look, I poke China in the eye. I'm the most hated person in China and I can go away being proud of that title. But what does it do to China? Does it help that wound heal? Or does it make people uh, suffer more? Do, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting very emotional talking mm. about it because for her, for these people, probably it's nothing, right? 
but for us it's a it's a huge is, deal is and that's wound, what matters perception is the wound is what healed, matters is the wound healed Leosin, by increasing military exercises in ramping up that pressure well then don't poke in, in don't put your finger into into that wound don't but, put salt on it because then we will be more painful but Xi Jinping then we had will increased jump. we will say ouch and probably strike back and stop it what, right? when, when you talk that's, about that's all, when all you talk about, about striking back we know that Xi Jinping had said and he's been increased that rhetoric in recent years that if necessary, then Taiwan, in his words, will be reunified by force. How does of that course. heal a wound to talk about war? <laughs> I tell you, China is the last person to hurt itself if my metaphor stands, OK? You heal that wound by letting it heal, by not opening it, by not putting salt on it, by letting your body recover, OK? And China does not want to shoot itself because we are brothers and sisters. We don't want for, to and fight each other. That's the last there, thing. Isn't it? That's, That's the, the last thing. So help, help China instead of force China to use force. We don't want to go to war, but by visiting, by ratcheting up the relation, the level of relationship between the United States and Taiwan or between any other sovereign country with Taiwan, you are making it more and more difficult for China to stay calm and not to use military force. Is, is this That's what just we so are, simple, isn't it? Is this what we are seeing now, Leo Sin, that, that we are drifting ever closer toward? Do you believe, do you believe that that is a, if a, a people, possibility if people, right now? If people keep their promises, if people use a little bit of common sense and sense and say, OK, we made that promise, we are not going to break our own promise and we're not going to poke China for, for whatever purposes, this is not going to happen. I tell you, the Chinese, we don't want war. We want to have money. We want to build home. We want to go on holidays. We want to, we want to enjoy life for good, goods from Australia. Australia wine or go to the Great Barrier Reef and, and have fun. We don't want to war. We don't want people to die at our doorstep, that our brothers and sisters die. But don't make us do that. Don't make us do that. We're looking at, at your program and, and the program on Nancy Pelosi and the visit, it pointed out, in your view, the hypocrisy, um, it was very critical of Nancy Pelosi. But in terms of, right. of, of journalistic balance in this, there was, no, there was no discussion about what Xi Jinping's intentions may be, the threat of war, the increased military exercises. Isn't that also part of this equation? And why wasn't that in the program that you prepared? Well, we were talking about the person that Pelosi was. And but it's so not I, just about I go Nancy into Pelosi, that. is it? It's also about what China does. It, it, in terms of journalism, uh, don't without, sh without don't being shift just the, propaganda, don't, don't, okay, is, don't, it, is it also not to show shift. the other side? Yeah, we show the other side. And the world knows the other side. They watch your program. They watch program on BBC, on CNN, you know, all on, on Fox, on, on Sky News. They watch all of the. Where is the other side? But, yeah, I thank you, Stan for inviting me on your show to mm. give me that voice. I thank you for that, okay? And we do that same, we do the same. We have other voices, other opinions on our show as well, but our primary responsi responsibility is to let out the Chinese perspective. And, and what I did was precisely how China, how the Chinese people, how we in the Chinese media see Pelosi as a politician. And that's what we did. And it's been a pleasure to have you on the program. The invitation is always open, Leah Sin, as you know. Thank you again for, for joining us. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Stan, once again.